and the USA on the floor. Monica, I know that you'll be feeling a little bit for the um, Chinese because secretly you've got great admiration and hope that they're going to do something marvellous and actually push the Romanians very hard. But they've got to start on beam. And that really is a disadvantage, isn't it? Yes, and my heart goes out to them because I do feel that they are very talented, particularly talented. And for them to start on beam, it's a terrible piece of apparatus nerve-wracking, having to harness all of that adrenaline into balance. But nevertheless, whoever wins is going to be a fantastic competition. I'm really excited at the prospect of it. The, the battle between Romania and the USSR goes on, and gold medalists from the Olympic Games, sorry, bronze medalists from the Olympic Games, the USA, are here fighting to try and get into the medals in this world championship. There goes the gong for the end of warm-up. That's... Uh... Daniela Silivash just finishing off her warm-up. Don't panic, she hasn't blown it on her very first piece of apparatus. Still just getting the final little bit, and the Romanians now re-chalking the bars. The preparation of the asymmetric bars is so important. Every gymnast likes them a little bit different. The right amount of chalk, the, the right amount of tackiness. And everybody joins in and helps in that preparation. First up for the Romanians, Lecramiora Philippe, a newcomer into the team. Since the Olympics, they've had um, Voinia's retired, and they've had a few injury problems, Monica. We were learning a bit about it today, weren't we? Yes, and I think they're a bit thin on the ground as regards their selection. But we know that they have tremendous tenacity, wonderful team spirit, and I know that they'll be rooting for gold. Here goes Philippe. Pirouette on the giant, the coach standing in for the catch of. Now he goes away, confident that she can come to no real harm. Romanians, great technicians on the asymmetric bars. Forward giant. Inward double somersault, dismount. Lecromura Philippe comes from Moinesht, the newest member of the Romanian team. Take advantage of the wonderful slow motion camera, seeing the full twisting giant, very complex hand change into the Katchev. Working in and out of the difficulties takes skill. There the catcher from a different angle. Now the long wait. I sometimes feel that that's the worst part of it. That a very difficult element, especially rotating around the bar in the reverse grass, but then to add that inward double front, really skillful. Aurelia Dobre, the next up for the Romanians. Nobody going on any piece of apparatus at the moment, but the Russians, I can tell you, have started in spectacular style. They always do, don't they? But on the vault, Baitova, I can see, has already got a 9.937 posted there. Sajinenkova. Eliana Sajinenkova, second on vault for the Soviet team, a newcomer to this World Championships team. Loads of power, stylish, well elevated, just a murmur on the landing on that Yurchenko. And Phillips. Asymmetric bar scores come up. She started well too, 9.9. So battle joined straight away. I mean, this is the difference in quality. Immediately, first person up scoring nine nines for both the Soviets and the Romanians. Wonderful uh, square Arab spring. And just look at the elevation. 
beautiful form in the twist. A pity about the murmur on landing. 9.837. Well, that's her first bolt. And remember, the women have two chances. So now she can either change the vault and go for something more difficult or try and perform the same vault even better. And she runs out, but she didn't start the vault, so she's just got to run up wrong. That's perfectly allowed without penalty. She can go back and restart it. Well, at least it shows that they're human. Either she was a little bit nervous or she was on the wrong foot coming into the round off before the board. Never worth risking an accident. As long as she doesn't actually contact the apparatus, then that doesn't matter. She can have another attempt. From Riga, she's 16 next month. Now, was that better, Monica, or not? I think that it was more stable, yes. She had a little bounce back on the landing, but the dynamics of the vault was a margin better. 9.837 in the bag. Can she squeeze it up over the 9.9? .9? Excellent at this phase. The big step back on landing. Be interesting. Very difficult, John, because sometimes things are judged just on their landing. Now to the asymmetric bars. Christina Bontash, third person up for the Romanians. Dynamic little gymnast, very tiny, only 136 centimeters. Encouragement coming from the Romanian team as she goes through. Tight stick the landing. Yes, and she did. The second Romanian girl to go, Aurelia Dobre, the reigning all-round world champion, the defending champion, scored 9.887 on hers. Now Olga Strajeva to vault, recovered from her knee injury, which she injured in Seoul on the beam. Positive. And the Soviets are really looking in fine form, very confident. Team coach Alexandra Alexandrov just giving a word of advice. Again, the Yurchenko invented by Soviet world champion in 1983, Natalia Yurchenko. with all the Russians, superb height. And they practice their landings so much. Sezhenenkova, by the way, got another 9.837 for her second vault. So it's neck and neck. And Christina Bontash, 9.9 .9 for that asymmetric bars routine. So at the moment, nobody cracking under the pressure. Strajeva, 9.825 for her first vault. And she needs a much more stable landing to get into the 9.9s. Nine That's really where it went wrong. Yes, that was better. Bumped down and held that landing must be coming down vertically to do that you've got to get the timing and everything right otherwise you've got to make some sort of movement to just stop yourself the round off Natalia Yurchenko the first person to introduce that style of vaulting and a much better landing Strajeva had to be carried out of the arena in Seoul. Sadly missed the final stages of the competition, but she's in fine form here today. Got her team gold. But now the United States on the floor. Wendy Bruce starts her competition.
Highest the USA team have finished is fifth, right back in 1978. Double back somersault with a full twist in the first. Wendy, the highest qualifier in the USA World Championship trial. She's training partner to Brandy Johnson at Brown's Gym in Orlando, Florida. A little step back there, just stayed in the 12 meter area, no penalty. The chalk marks on the corners are to highlight the edge of the arena for the gymnasts' tumbles as well as to prevent them slipping into their final tumbles. This reduces the sweat on their feet if they're working in bare feet. And up onto the asymmetric bars as she finishes is little Eugenia Popper from Romania. A real A bars expert. The catch of Well, a little offline there with the dismount, but she held it. But the Romanians putting on a splendid performance. Tremendous encouragement coming from each other. And not seen by us yet, but Dudnik on the vault has posted a 10. The first 10 of this phase of the competition that we've seen. Strajeva, by the way, scored 9.862. But Dudnik, the first person in the World Championships to score two tens. She scored a ten on compulsory floor in the first part of the team championship. Shelley Stack of the USA to floor. <laughs> Wendy Bruce scored 9.862. Pull in back out, but flirted with the sideline. Not sure whether a foot went out there or not. one and a half twister into punch front and this is a very exhausting routine tiring to watch let alone perform tumble for stack pike in tuck out of the double back and that really was a lesson in fitness there from shelly stack from the usa well the you can hear the cheers and the roars going on all around the arena so much going on we've just had daniela silivash on the bars dudnik got a 10 as well for her second vault On to Beam. Chen Qiu Ting from China. <laughs> Chen developed into a very stylish gymnast. We first saw her at the World Championships in Rotterdam where she made an impact on floor. And the Chinese have started well on beam. Yang Bo, 9975, almost a 10 there. Fandi, 985. 
Wang Wenjing 9912 and Li Yan 9.825. So they're keeping up with the pace. What a beautiful skill. That was a delayed handstand into chest roll from a flick flack. Really tight finish there. Lovely, fast, double back somersault. No cowboying of the knees. She really whipped around. And there, Svetlana Boginskia from the Soviet Union. And she's already seen two of her team score tens. Lashenova as well as Dudnik getting the perfect mark. In a way, Monica, it almost puts the pressure on her, doesn't it? Because these scores count towards the all-round individual competition as well as the team event. Yes, and she's really under pressure from her own teammates. That sneer of determination, the Baginskia look. Oh, she's a fine competitor. Just goes back and checks everything, gets on with the job. And a 10 has just gone up for Daniela Silivash. They took a long, long time before awarding it, but 10 has gone up. So Silivash has started on the asymmetric bars with a 10 for Romania. And Baginska is going to have to get rid of that dodgy landing on vault for to get a 10. Always one foot in front of the other, always a murmur of the feet. 9.9 .9 for her first vault. Well, the Romanians started well. Popper, the mark you haven't had on their asymmetric bars, 9.912. And Shelley Stack scored 9.887 on floor. Here goes Barginskia with her second vault. Still puts that foot a little forward, but the landing very steady. Yes, that's the best I've ever seen her land, that vault. There might have been a few centimetres parting a left and right foot, but they landed at the same time. Boginskia, Yochenko, straight position, and oh my goodness, it is straight, and the full twist. This definitely one of Boginskia's best ever vaults. Sensible not to move that right foot too rapidly on landing and give away her little sneaky fault. And 9.95 she gets for the second one. Looking up there in the hope, she knew it was a good one, but not quite. Chen's beam, 9.987. And they really have started on a hot streak. The Chinese, the Romanians, and the Soviets. Alexander Alexandrov strolling around, pleased with his uh, Soviet team. Well, the arena at the moment empty apart from the Chinese girl, Ma Ying, on the beam. But now on tape, a chance to see the first of those tens, Alessia Dudnik from the Soviet Union. Yes, and that was a magnificent vault. There wasn't a murmur on the landing. The Urchenko looked as though she had slack knees when she came in. The half twist on and it's a double twisting Yurchenko with a perfect landing, so it was well worthy of a 10. I wonder which one we saw there. They were both perfect. So didn't matter. Alessia Dudnik, to her went the honor of the first 10. Now this is her teammate, Lashinova. Followed her with the same bolt and the same result. I wonder which one we saw there. They were both perfect. So didn't matter. Alessia Dudnik, to her went the honor of the first 10. Now this is her teammate, Lashinova. Followed her with the same bolt and the same result.
Well, I thought Dudnik had actually done a single twist in hers, but she hadn't. She put two in. It wasn't quite the same vault. Single twist there from Lashinova. But she does it so brilliantly, and the tariff still so high that it was enough. Gabriella Potterak also on tape. This, the A bars. Very nice combination there. Inward full from the hot po change position on the top bar, straight into the Jaeger somersault. Potterak developed into a fine, mature gymnast. And the score for that one, 9.925, and it provided the prelude to this. Daniela Silavash coming up last of the Romanian team. And the idea to build the scores for her, and Silavash now taking up the challenge thrown down by the Soviets. The Delchev somersault tucked in there, very difficult. A new full twisting element on the bottom bar added to her routine since Seoul. And that was just enough to put the icing on the cake for the Romanians. A 10 from Daniela Silivas. Big smile from her. It went very well. She knew right away that she had to stand a good chance of making the 10. I was keeping an eye while we were watching the floor on that exercise and the judges took a long time deliberating. There the dismount, the shoot front with half twist. And there, confirmation, Daniela Silavash with the perfect 10. What a competition already. As the gymnasts take a break, we'll take one too. Welcome back. You're watching Eurosport and the World Gymnastics Championships. The second rotation of this final subdivision has just started. The Soviet Union still in the lead at the end of that uh, first round, as we expected. But the really interesting thing there is that China on the beam, a very difficult piece to start on, outscored the Romanians on that first rotation. The Chinese scoring 49.674 and the Romanian scoring 49.637. It is so tight. And there, Ma Ying, the first Chinese competitor on the floor. That's where the Chinese have gone. The Soviet Union have now moved to the asymmetric bars. The United States to the vault and Romania to the beam. And Ma Ying making a sad mistake, stepping out of the floor area at the beginning of her, her exercise and then putting her hands down at the end of the exercise. So now she really has put the pressure on the rest of her teammates to put in perfect exercises. She'll have lost at least 0.4. And you can tell from those marks you saw in the first rotation that nine nines are the order of the day. That's where you've got to be. And she's being marked out of 9.6. Great disappointment, but obviously Floor not her, her best piece. She was last up on beam, which means she's very strong on that piece of apparatus. On A-bars, Elena Sazhenenkova, the second Russian up. Fabulous form there. High Jaeger somersault into undershoot. On the bottom bar, the Soviets really are wonderful at variety on both bars, not just the high bar, but their transition from high to low bar. She got all her difficulty and didn't need to go anything, do anything too spectacular at the end there. Double tuck back, lands it beautifully. And little Svetlana Baitova doing a great job for the Russians as first up. She went before Sazhenenkova and put in a 9.9 .9 starter again. And 
there's that sailing high Jaeger into the undershoot to handstand on the bottom bar, John. Wonderful work. Lovely work, particularly as she swung it high above the bar, the Jaeger somersault. So many of the girls just sort of fall off it and quickly get the spin in. But that was a true Jaeger. And then the Ginga somersault to follow. And it's not just the quantity of what the Russians produce, but the quality. It is really excellent work. 9.95. And that means there were a couple of tens in there from the judges. And she's only the second girl up. Third to go for the Russians on this peak. Little Alessia Dudnik. And Alessia bound to be nervous on this piece. It was in a compulsory exercise that she dropped a score. She dropped right down to 9.362, putting in an extra swing, but starting off with a French somersault over the bottom bar. In steps Alexandrov, so she's going for the catch of. Off he goes again. She had a mini crisis on the bottom bar. She missed her hand and managed to continue as though nothing had happened. I think it was just a heartbeat that would have been noticeable. Obviously a few problems with that piece of apparatus for her, but got through that. Look at her face. And that hurt. On to beam. Aurelia Dobre. She's the defending world champion. But our sources in the Romanian camp tell us that, in fact, they weren't going to work her. She's had two operations on her knee. She was going to come here mainly to give the other girls confidence and act as reserve. But they've got so many injury problems in the end, they've had to work her. Nothing wrong with that, though. Just shows the thoroughness of the learning process to be able to be out of gymnastics for a long time with an injury and come back and not lose your bottle on the beam because it's all about courage. And usually a layoff uh, saps the courage. Just the little hesitation, meaning that the final move wasn't linked. Nice little unusual travel along the beam. Crowd appreciated. Of course, it won't be on the beam that uh, Dobre will really feel the knee just on the landings. That was an excellent exercise, stylish, full of difficulty. Looks in great form. Everybody trained to peak for these championships and they felt that she perhaps wasn't quite there. Dudnik's bar score, 9.862. And Natalia Lashonova, next to go up, fourth up for the Soviets. Lashonova, a really powerful little gymnast. Very tight. That was a beautiful ginger, probably the best we've ever seen produced by a female on the A bars, into the stolder on the bottom bars. Five there on the A-bars. Christina Bontash goes up next. Sorry, I don't mean on the A-bars, I mean on the beam. That's where Bontash is. Stuck that straight back somersault on the end. 
before the tumble. Quite a healthy pause. The judges seem to have chosen to ignore those. Some gymnasts move straight into the difficulties without preparation. And that must be much more difficult for them. Double split there. Particularly lively floor music for Yang Bo's exercise in the background, but totally blocked out by Christina Bontash. Double back finish. And there, Svetlana Boginskia, European champion. She won last time out will be desperate to do it again in the individual championship but here in the team event she's being pushed very hard by all the other contenders lovely giant with a full pirouette on the top of it and then straight into the catcher it's called a toe on toe off into the giant then the double back, clean, precise, full of difficulty, but I would say not quite a 10. I'll stick my neck out. Boginskia going up fifth on this piece of apparatus. The other scores, so far from the other Soviets, they've had a 9.95 from Lashonova, 9.95 from Sazhenenkova, 9862 from Dudnik and now and a 99 from Baitova. Daniela Silivash up on beam. And I feel nervous for her. What with Elena Shishinova's retirement, the world hopes that Silivash can take this major championship. She's never won a world or an Olympic all around final. At 19, she really does deserve it. Flick straight, straight, looking very positive. Might have only looked like a small wobble, but that was a major mistake. And Silivash is such a perfectionist, she'll be so cross about that. These gymnasts aren't happy to stay on the beam. They just don't want to wobble, they don't want a foot fault. And she won't smile. Brandy Johnson on vault for America. Brandy Johnson, the top American going last on the vault. She went superbly through the compulsories, looked in great form. twisting Yurchenko. Well, I kept very quiet during Silovash's beam routine, Monica, but it was a 10 for Boginskaya on the asymmetric bars. Now, I'll stick my neck out. I bet Daniela Silovash doesn't get a 10 on the beam. Well, they were kind to Silovash as well, though. That big wobble, and she's still got a 9.9. We're we'll not going to a debate over the judging, but we're all entitled to our opinions. This is what makes the sport so interesting. Six judges, six opinions. Brandy Johnson, 9.875 for her first vault. A Yurchenko with a full twist. She has two chances at vault. 
She can either repeat the first or she can try and improve her tariff or difficulty and have a shot at something different. In the individual apparatus finals, they have to do just that. Looking a bit anxious, could she be making it more difficult? Yes, different vault, handspring one and a half pike with a half twist, up to 10 tariff, but not very square on the landing there. On to floor for China, Li Yan. Well, it was very high, but she didn't quite get her legs underneath her properly. This John, the Chinese gymnast of old, very slender and not very powerful. And I think we saw signs of that there going in for a, a twisting middle tumble. Good to have the variety there, but the very top floor workers are now getting in three double somersaults. Yan under pressure to do well for the Chinese because they've had a couple of disasters on the floor. There's a 9037 I can see in there from Wang Wenjing and Ma Ying had a fall certainly with an 8.9. Again, twisting at the end, lacking in power for the big tricks. And really that is a shame that the Chinese should let themselves go on floor. When it mattered on Bean, they stuck with tenacity, it shows that they have got the team spirit, they have got the competitive temperament, and they really let it slip when they shouldn't have. Brandy Johnson, 9.9 .9 for her vault. Li Yan, the last to finish, this now on tape. Wendy Bruce for the States, her vault. This young USA team, Monica, really coming into this competition with a lot of spirit, a lot of fight, trying to put themselves back to the 1984 position. Yes, really enthusiastic. Putting in some very, very difficult stuff. That's an excellent vault. 9.875 for her. They haven't really too much chance of catching the top three, but a fourth position finish, very big for her. Rajeva on a bars. Lovely high catch of Giant. Oh, and twisting double back to finish with. Super stuff from her, 9.95. So close to that 10. On floor, China's Chen Qiuting. Very powerful little tumbler, a finalist in the 87 World Championships in Rotterdam on this piece. And what an opener, flick, whip, double flick and full in back out. There aren't too many people doing a full in back out somersault with a whip in the middle of the run. But just notice how tightly together her feet are in her flicks and in her somersaults. Probably the only gymnast who is that compact and that tidy in tumbling. And one of the things you really do notice is the great contrast between her and the other Chinese gymnasts on the floor. Li Yan. 
exactly the opposite sort of floor worker, really. It's a little Chen Kui Ting. Yes, bags of personality in the middle and the powerful tumbles to match. That really was excellent work. And an unusual dismount to cap it. That was beautiful. 9.925 and worth every hundredth of a point. Yes, not content just to go into the little finish, graceful, but tumbles out of it. And there we are, the positions after two rotations. Soviet Union well in the lead. Romania now clear in second place. China holding on to the bronze position with the USA fourth. We'll take another break now. Join us again in a couple of minutes. The practice still going on at the moment and we go into the third rotation. This very exciting Team World Championship. This time China on the vault. USA on the A bars, the United, uh, sorry, the Soviet Union on the beam, and Romania on floor. And this is Svetlana Baitova, who's doing a grand anchor job for her team. She's up first on every piece of apparatus, setting the standard of composure that the Russians really need to take them to gold. Triple twist to finish, moving to the side, but a good round of scores so far for Baitova. 9937 on Volta first piece, 99 on bars. And I'm sure she'll be in the very high nines for that excellent beam exercise. Flick. Straight back, straight back. A lot of the lesser gymnasts, when they're going for that three tumble travel down the beam putting two flicks and only one somersault but she's putting two somersaults in looks very relaxed about it all doesn't she yes and that's why she went up first because she's probably the type of temperament who can cope quite easily with the pressure don't know how anybody can cope quite easily with the pressure of competing on beam at a world championships 9.925 so they were pretty generous about the landing from that double twist but Baita has done her job again given them a start that doesn't put the others under pressure Natalia Lashonova now front somersault mount seen a few people come to grief on that one And this should be very interesting to watch. One of the few gymnasts who tumbles on beam. That is a flick straight back. That's a real one. Perfect posture throughout those jumps. The shoulders never moving. So powerful, she finds jumping so easy. Pull in back out to finish with. And the first time ever produced from a double flick first time in the world double flick full in back out and she's just got the power to do it brilliant stuff an amazingly athletic beam exercise from natalia lashonova 
And that could push the judges towards a 10. No crisis points in the exercise at all. Enormous confidence all the way through it. And this they dismount again. Take a look at it. First time ever produced in a major championship by any gymnast in the world. Quite a step back on landing, but it's such a difficult one. There, Nellie Kim, a former world champion herself, now a judge on the beam. And 9.962, a couple of tens in there, but people, quite rightly, taking off just for that little fault on the landing. Olga Strajeva to beam. Arab Spring, flick, flack, flick, flack, straight back, nice series of mounts there. The one arm balance, she didn't hold it as long as I've seen her hold it before. But seeing the Soviet team going up one after each other on beam here, a great study in their strength and depth. That's why they're virtually unbeatable when it comes to team gymnastics. Having said that, they did lose in Rotterdam. But that almost sort of worked for them because they went away and said, well, perhaps we're getting a bit complacent and came back even stronger. Strajeva is a beautifully powerful gymnast. She has correct combination of power and elegance. The Russians managing so well to combine the difficult tricks with still wonderful balletic form. Well, as Strajeva finishes, we'll take another break. We'll be back with her score and the rest of the competition very soon. metric bars Olga Strajeva's score comes up 9.925 she scores for that beam exercise Sandy going through her bar exercise cleanly the Americans really doing well just lacking the finer points of technique perhaps a little more body line required on the handstands and the Giants but nevertheless much improved gymnastics from them, John. Yes, and they bring their own sort of extrovert brand of gymnastics to this competition. It's good to see the contrasts. Christina Bontash on floor. She's fourth up for the Romanians on this piece. So far, Romanians have got a 9-9 from Potterak, Popper a 9-8-8-7, and Philip a 9-8-5. Good set of scores. Pulling back out there in the middle tumbling run and then coming out of it, going all the way back across the floor. Sensational stuff. A double tuck back on the end, just as a throwaway. Bontash has always been a tumbler, but now developing the dance side, making her much more of a complete floor worker. Well, they were sensational tumbling runs. No other word for them. Great variety all the way through, and the crowd appreciating that spectacular exercise. The Romanians always manage to produce appeal. The, the audience absolutely enthralled with her. Now Svetlana Boginskia to beam for the Soviets.
Very business-like attitude. Minor crisis there. Having to adjust. All those little leaps that look fairly simple. Not so at all on the beam. No. It's very difficult because most of the jumps are blind landings and series of jumps means as you land from one jump, balance has to be absolutely accurate for the takeoff for the next. The whistles round the arena tell you that Christina Vontash didn't get a 10. It was a 9.987. could be absolutely disastrous for the Russians and for Boginskia. She was in the lead after the compulsories. And that really will interest Daniela Silovash. I bet she noticed that fall. And a little under rotation on the landing. Boginskia in trouble now in the individual all-round championship because these scores count she'll start if she gets there on an even footing but now Silivash who saw all that waiting to go on her floor exercise really sticks the landing on the opening pull in back out somersault a new floor exercise <laughs> Well, beautifully executed. And Monica, what's been interesting with Silavash is that as she's grown older, she's now a 19-year-old, so her floor exercises in particular have developed. I mean, she started with these elfin little jigs doing hornpipes and things. Much more elegant now. Oh, yes, so beautifully mature. And I don't care what anybody says, that a floor routine from a 19-year-old with that maturity is worth a 10. Christina Bontash, a brilliant gymnast, but just immature and to me it shouldn't get a 10 and this is the difference between the senior and the junior gymnast in my opinion Silivas showing that she can tumble brilliantly and it's what goes in between and the scores come up she's got a 10 Silivas is second 10 so she's setting herself up well for the individual championship. One thing's changed there, she doesn't carry these scores through into that championship, but the reason it becomes so vital for Boginskia with her fall off beam is she might not even qualify as one of the Russian top three. And now Aurelia Dobre to floor, defending world champion, very, very elegant. And that's where that injury that she's carried shows on the landings, pulling back out, hands down.
Dobre, a brilliant mover. Wonderful dance interpretation. This is a skill in itself. The tumbles aren't the all-important factor. There again, you see the lack of strength in that knee, that double twist. She wouldn't have been doing that a couple of years ago. But this is the team event, and the Romanians will be able to discard her score off the floor. Clever move, putting her up last. There's no way they think she's better, in fact, than Silavash. But they stuck her up last, hoping that she would perhaps get an extra tenth or two from the judges because she was in sixth position. But found out on this opening tumble goes for the the big difficult tumble the pull in back out and the hands go down at least point three away there Dobre probably not training the big moves and very unfortunate on that landing still waiting for Dobre's score to come up this a tape of Alessia Dudnik up to the beam. Dudnik going up last on this piece for the Russians. twisting back somersault from the Arab Spring. One really would think, John, that she was doing this exercise on the floor. She never looks down. You really have got to know a bit about the sport to realize what a difficult tumble that is on beam. She makes it look so easy. But you've got 10 centimeters, and to put a full twist in and land in that straighter line is a magnificent feat. I think if you stood and psyched yourself up for 10 seconds and did only that, it would be magnificent. But to slot it in nonchalantly in a World Championships in the middle of a beam routine lasting a minute and a half, something quite spectacular. And that really is class. Lands beautifully with the double twist. Really kept herself extended all the way through it. There is that full twisting back somersault on beam. You have to be exactly in line. And what I knew, but you didn't, is she got the 10 for it. Her third 10 of these championships already. And we could be looking at the new all-round individual champion. There, Chen Kui Ting's vault. Dudnik really looking something a bit special, Monica. Yes, she really has excellent qualities. Chen Kui Ting again and 9.925 that her second vault, keeping the Chinese in the hunt. So it's three rotations gone, just one to go. I think the Soviets, with their sort of strength in depth, now uncatchable. A full two-point lead there. Romania in the silver medal position, China in third. They look like the medalists at the moment, and in that order. We'll be back for the final round in just a moment. gymnast warm-up for the fourth and last rotation of this women's team competition as you can see the Soviets are on the floor it's the USA on beam China on the asymmetric bars and the Romanians finish on the vault and I wonder what's going through Svetlana Boginska's head she knows she's got to compete for the team today that all they require of her there she is is a really solid performance on floor. 
but she probably can't help but thinking that she might not even make the top 36 individual all-round final. Here's somebody who hasn't put a foot wrong, though. All competition. Little Svetlana Baitova. She's been first up on everything, and my goodness, she's done them proud. Once again, Svetlana Baitova, as solid as a rock, cool, calm, and collected. Yes, she's done magnificently. What a pity that she didn't have a better competition in her compulsory exercises. She was the poorest Soviet scorer there, a total of 39.087, just getting past the 39 barrier. So she's there wondering what might have been. She knows, in effect, that that is the end of her contribution to these World Championships, Monica. Yes, but if she can take home a team gold, that should be very satisfying for her hard work and very rewarding to know that she's contributed very well to the team effort. Boginskia, by the way, is the third top-scoring Russian at the moment, but she's only about 0.1 ahead of Sezhenenko there. Li Yang on the asymmetric bars for China. Second up. She might have been lacking in power on the floor, but certainly her power to weight ratio on the bars is ideal. Nimble and sylph like going around these bars. Beautiful exercise, and that's the way a double back somersault should be. Dismounted, tight tuck, stretched toes all the way throughout the dismount. Baitova's floor score, 9.837. Giants with pirouettes, two of them before the catch of in her exercise. Leanne, very slender indeed. Lacrimona, Philippe waiting to go on to her final piece of apparatus. Vault for the Romanians. And she's the second up. Oh dear, a catastrophe for her. Fortunately, that could be discounted. She's got another one to go. And that was a very, very cautious vault. She really didn't look confident of getting over on that at all. Leanne's A bar score, 9.875. I don't think I've seen a Romanian gymnast approach the vault quite so diffidently, Monica. No, only, I think, Silivash in the early years when she lacked the power, but uh, Philippe has the power. She pulled her shoulders back before she came to the board for takeoff and slowed down her run. 9.225. But she's got a second chance. That was the great Tereshova. Now, Philippe, 9.225. 
unfortunately, in this competition, it's the better of the two volts that counts. It's not the average of them. Adrian Goriak's little words of wisdom after her first volt made all the difference. She put a half twist on the end of that volt and landed it soundly. Now, Alessia Dudnik, fresh from her 10 on beam to floor. Pull in, back out. That was a dramatic exercise with exquisite dance and tremendous dance appeal and quality all the way through. Just could she get another 10? It was really worth it. Alessia Dudnik, really for such a, a youngster, she's only 15. Great maturity there in her dance and her the expressive section of the exercise. This the, the opener, the full in, back out, two somersaults, one twist. And I loved her middle tumble. Nice to see something different, innovative, as well as skillful. Two and a half twists, and then a punch front out of it. Lovely. Yes, stolen from uh, Dudeva. 9.95 for Dudnik, not a 10 for her. Philippe's second vault paid off, 9.875. Well, here's the top scoring Soviet at the moment, Natalia Lashonova. And under the old rules of competition, you'd already be putting her in as favorite for the individual all round because these scores would carry through, but they all start off exactly the same base once they've qualified for the competition under the new rules. Oh, that was magnificent. Double straight, and it was straight. John, definitely the record for the most doubles in a routine. But this is the beauty of such a wonderful sport like gymnastics, that so many skills can be added together with such a different effect. Daniela Silabash to the vault. Sticks it. A little bit low, I had to cheat it a bit, but held on to that landing well. 
Yes, I saw her mouth. Wow, it was a bit low. Her shoulders dropped down on the landing. A very deep pike in on the landing because she was well under rotated. See how low her chest is there. Oops. Did so well to hold on to that landing and not have to move out of it, but the judges aren't fooled too easily. A little bit loose going into it as well. Yes, John, but we're getting spoiled. We're watching such wonderful gymnastics that even the most minute faults show. Lashanova, 9.987 for that floor exercise. That's what all the whistles and hisses and boos are for. They thought it was worth the 10. And John Silivash looking very relaxed, enjoying this competition. Not always renowned for that. The music starts though, and it's Boginskia onto the floor. Baginskia had it in her to produce such a sensuous routine. Very sexy dance and skillful tumbles, and that I did like. And the applause grows around the arena because that, in effect, secures the gold medal for the Soviet Union. They've now put in five very solid exercises, nothing below a 9837 so far. And I can't imagine that Boginskia is going to score lower than that. And that will certainly be enough to give the Soviet Union the gold. Silivash for her second vault scores 9.962. So that too keeps Romania on course for the silver. Boginska's final tumble. And well, a 10 for Boginska, and I've got to agree that was worth it. Wonderful exercise from her, a worthy 10. And that secures her place in the top 36 competition. Finishes second highest scoring of the Soviets. Olga Strzejewa, the last Soviet gymnast on floor. Their choreographer really has been busy. Some very inventive work.
Well, again, a totally different approach. It's been marvellous watching the Soviets on their floor exercises. They really have illustrated how different they can be. And that's why you've got points for originality and bonus on the floor. They have to be earned. Powerful little Christina Bontash landing her Sukahara with a full twist. Considering she's so tiny, it really shot off the top of the apparatus. Sorry, that was a Yurchenko. I just saw the end phase. There's the Arab Spring. Half somersault onto the horse, one and a half off, and a full twist in the middle. Ecstatic celebrations there from the Russians. Nice to see them sharing each other's joy. There in particular, you've got uh, little Elena Sajanenkova. She, of course, hasn't been through all this before. It's brand new, her first gold medal. Christina Bontash, 9.975 for her first vault. Now the chance to persuade the other judges that she's worth a 10. She had at least three judges gave her 10. But the top and bottom discarded, and the average of the middle four. It's good vaulting, but the loss of legs in the air is more the reason for not getting a 10. Of course, that had a deduction as well for the landing. Yes, two little minor errors there, so I can't see her bettering that. They were evident even at full speed, so now they'll become glaringly obvious. Look how split the legs are. And then she hasn't got the twisting exact, so she has to step sideways on landing. Still an awful lot of movement for a little girl. There we can see the half somersault on, the split of the legs. Double twist in the second flight there, but not anchoring the landing. Dobre getting a kiss from the coaches. They know that they've got silver. 9.975 it was that counted. 9.937 for Bontash's second vault. Well, everything looking wonderful for the individual competitions which we've got to come up because we've seen so much innovative stuff there, Monica, out of this team championship. You know that the Russians and the Romanians in particular going into a new era. Yes, there was wonderful gymnastics and the fight between Silovash and Boginskaya continues into the individual event. Here on tape, the on asymmetric bars. This is Fandi, the elegant Fandi, and again that lovely tuck position on the dismount. 9.962. Brandy Johnson from the United States on beam. Good scores from the girls from America, 999875. Some wonderful work. Oh, I had to hold my breath there. She must have lost at least two to three tenths, but she managed to stay on. That'll be a great disappointment to her. In danger now of not qualifying for that top 36 competition. Certainly can't afford another mistake. The front somersault lands that one safely. A nasty move that because a blind landing, you can't see where your feet are going to come down. with problems all the way for Brandy Johnson. 
but she managed to stay on. Nevertheless, despite Brandy's troubles on the beam, a great effort from the USA team. All the others scored high on the beam. That was definitely their worst exercise. So they hold on to fourth place, which for them is their highest ever finish in the World Championships. That's a great effort. Well, their confirmation of the final result, the Soviet Union taking the team gold, winning it back from the Romanians. They took it in Rotterdam. This time they have to settle for silver. China back up there with the best, winning a medal in the team event, showing that they've now got strength in depth. But this competition will be remembered most perhaps for some of the magnificent performances. Let's see a couple of those tens again. Alessia Dudnik from the Soviet Union. Yes, and that was a magnificent vault. There wasn't a murmur on the landing. Yurchenko looked as though she had slack knees when she came in. The half twist on and at a double twist in Yurchenko with a perfect landing, so it was well worthy of a test. I wonder which one we saw there. They were both perfect. Alessia Dudnik, to her went the honour of the first ten. Now, this is her teammate, Lashinova. Followed her with the same vault and the same result. Well, I thought Dudnik had actually done a single twist in hers, but she hadn't. She put two in. It wasn't quite the same vault. Single twist there from Lashinova. And while Dudnik and Lashinova were creating perfection with the vault, fireworks for the crowd. On the floor, Boginskaya was also getting the perfect mark in a totally different pace of exercise. Down for that. The music starts though, and it's Boginskia onto the floor. And I wouldn't have thought that Baginski had it in her to produce such a sensuous routine. Very sexy dance and skillful tumble. And while the Soviets were dominating the competition and setting the pace with the tens, they certainly didn't have it all their own way. The Ramonians got into the act two. Daniela Silivash on A bars. Daniela Silivash coming up last of the Romanian team. And the idea to build the scores for her. And Silovash now taking up the challenge thrown down by the Soviets. The Delchev somersault tucked in there. Very difficult. A new full twisting element on the bottom bar added to her routine since Seoul. 
And that was just enough to put the icing on the cake for the Romanians. A 10 from Daniela Silivash. Well, the gymnasts back into the arena for the last time. The best bit of all for some of them, the medal giving ceremony. There, Yuri Titov of the Soviet Union, the president of the International Gymnastics Federation. On his left, Ellen Berger, the head of the technical committee. Titov, a fine Russian gymnast in his own right. Doesn't look like it now, does he? And the public address just announcing Ellen Berger from East Germany. And there, 18 happy young ladies. The Vice President of the Schwäbische Turnerbund. La Vice President du Schwäbische Turnerbund, Frau Inge Janle. Vice President of the Organizing Committee here in Stuttgart. And the head of the Organizing Committee here. They've made a great success of this tournament, certainly. Tremendous atmosphere, big crowds. But now the presentation. First and world champion in the team competition. Premier et champion du monde 1989 with 396,793 points. Die Mannschaft aus der UDSSR. So Natalia Lashonova leads. The Russian team up onto the podium, taking center position, the number one spot. They've dominated this team championship since the war. They've won it no less than 10 times now. Only having to settle for second place three times at Dortmund in 1966, when the Czechoslovakians won it. Fort Worth in 1979 and in Rotterdam in 1987, both times when they had to give second best to the Romanians. And the Romanians this time, the defending champions, not able to repeat that feat in Rotterdam, but they did produce some very fine gymnastics and only the strength in depth of these phenomenal